Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. Alhamdulillah. Wa salatu wa salamu ala Rasulillah wa ala alihi wa sahbihi ajma'in. Brothers and sisters in Islam, Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. We continue our journey of the hereafter. And we have reached the part where the scales have been brought and the deeds have been weighed. Last week we spoke about that event. It is an event, a moment in which everybody forgets all their relatives, anyone they ever knew, because of the anxiety and the fear that is at that moment. Aisha radiallahu anha, she once a Rasul Sallallahu had his head on her lap. He was resting and then she cried secretly and her tears dropped on his cheeks. He got up and asked her, what is the matter, Ya Aisha? And she said, on the day of judgment, will people remember those who they used to love? Will people remember those who they used to love? And the Prophet, peace be upon him, sat up straight and sat up straight and said to her, Ya Aisha, there are three moments in which no one will remember any of those whom they used to love. It is the moment when the books are about to be received. And the second one is when the deeds are about to be weighed. And the third moment is when the person is about to cross the bridge bestowed over hellfire, as-sirat. Last week we spoke about that second moment, when the deeds are weighed. Now, the people or the person has seen his or her deeds. They have received their book. Or maybe their book is delayed to be received in their right or their left. Or some people have received it in their right or their left. Each person on that day is being judged in their own accord. And what happens to them is different to anyone else. But at the end of the day, everyone receives their final destination and is either in heaven or hellfire. Some people have had their deeds debated. And so these people who debated them, they are the people who denied that they had done a sin. These people are destined to some kind of punishment because they will deny even on that day. The believer's deeds are only shown in front of him or her, but they don't deny. They admit everything. Some of these believers, Allah will make them come so close to him and will remind them of some secret deeds which were not recorded. Or some secret deeds that are recorded, but no one knows about them except Allah and he reveals them to that person. And then he says to him or her, Without any interpreter, no translator between you and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Every person, Allah will tell them, remember, when you did this, I have forgiven it. The disbeliever, Allah will also tell them, but not of secrets. He'll tell them of their secrets and they're open. He'll tell them, you will, be, you will receive the punishment today. And then he doesn't speak to them anymore. Then they move on now to the scales. There... The scales is in order to see or to show the servant what their deeds were worth. Maybe now that you have seen your records and you see that there is possibly a misery or possibly hope. It depends. No punishment has started yet. Allah says in the Quran, وَمَا كُنَّا مُعَذِّبِينَ حَتَّى نَبْعَثَ رَسُولًا We will never punish anyone until we have sent a messenger. In this world, and this also means that in the hereafter, 
you will not be punished until your deeds are shown, until you know that you deserve it. There are many authentic hadiths speaking about the fact that on the day of judgment, people will not, be, will not proceed into, if they are going to punishment, until they are shown that they deserve it. Until the truth is shown. Until the word of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is proven to them. To the point where their body will speak and so on and so forth. So the deeds show you your weight. What is your weight? Not your physical weight. This is not a scientific calculation. This is some different calculation. It's the calculation of a world that, does not, that is not fit within the realms of the physics of this world today. But rather it is a different world that has different circumstances, different rules, different science. It is your value. What are you worth in your deeds? What do you deserve of rewards and what do you deserve of punishment? What is your worth? And we mentioned this in detail last week. The deeds are placed. The scale is unknown in its form to us, but it is a scale, a type of scale that weighs. And the Rasul uses metaphorical words such as kaffa, which means one palm, the palm of a scale, and the other palm of a scale. He speaks about one side being heavier than another. It's a metaphor. How exactly his feature is unknown to us, but it is something that weighs. On that day, when the deeds are weighed, it is revealed completely to that human being or that jinn what is about to, it is what, what their worth is. They are either very high in worth or extremely miserable in worth. And at that moment when the scales are being weighed, more quarrels and debates occur. Every person has to prove themselves that they are not guilty. But no one can. If Allah had written so, they are. If Allah hadn't written so, they are not. However, more quarrels occur. Because people see the weight, that if it's heavy, you enter paradise, there is good. Or if it's light, meaning light in, in good deeds, there is misery and punishment and fear. Everybody will want to come and try to think of a way how they can make their scale heavier on that day. Maybe there's another chance. Maybe there's still a way. Maybe it's not it. Look, before God revealed certain secrets that weren't revealed in front of everyone, maybe this time there's certain things we can still bring out. We gave an example last week. A Rasul Sallallahu speaks about a person, a man who comes on the day of judgment and his deeds are not enough. He comes back in misery after being weighed to be given the sentence. You see, you go back and forth, taken here, taken there. Angels bring you back, different angels take, escorting you. Like being in a courtroom and the police officers are there waiting to take you or to leave you and so on. Some police officers escort you into the van, others transport you, some of them put you in shackles, others imprison you and so on. On the day of judgment, on much more of a... Of a, of a terrifying scale this is similar to that so then this man is given a card in which the words are written la ilaha illallah muhammadur rasulullah there is no god worthy of worship except allah and muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam is his final messenger and he says oh my lord how is this going to do for me it is placed on the scale and rasul sallallahu alaihi wasallam describes that the scale tosses over and all those bad deeds become very light compared to that word. What, is this, what does this mean? It means that the word La ilaha illallah is heavier than, than anything else. The, 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 the actions of Tawheed and the belief of Tawheed is heavier than anything else. This man was a Muwahid. This man possibly prayed but never made any and did his compulsory things but never made any partners with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. However, his bad deeds are just too many. Too many to count. But the word of Tawheed beats it. What is the conditions of the word of Tawheed? It is to live it in accordance with its conditions. To worship Allah and not associate any partners with Him whatsoever. To love Allah, to be loyal to Allah in all of your actions. How can a person love Allah when they do not pray to Him? How can a person um, be loyal to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala 
when they are hypocrites in their actions. So this person is free from hypocrisy, free from disloyalty to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, and so on and so forth. But the word of Tawheed is the heaviest on that day. The question to us is, do you really love Allah? If you do, you will fulfill that word of Tawheed, La ilaha illallah Muhammad Rasulullah. The greatest loss on that day are people who are bankrupt. At that point when the deeds are being weighed, as we said, some people want to earn more. They want to make the scales heavier. So the only way they find out is by snatching deeds from other people. How do they find this out? Some people call out or even the angels call out. Allah orders to be called out to the people who have been wronged in this world. Who has been wronged so that now we may compensate them? So now, Allah's rights have been dealt with. You found out. Your deeds to Allah, you found out. But now there's a second thing, which is even worse than the first one. Or could be better than the first one. What is it? The rights of people. The rights of people. Allahu alam. But from my understanding of the verses and the, the way the hadiths are narrated, this is probably the moment where the rights of people are dealt with. How do, how, what, there is one hadith, very strong hadith, that give, well, there are many hadiths, but this one hadith that I want to narrate to you. Al Rasul Sallam said to his companions, this Sahih hadith, he asked them, Atadruna man al muflis, do you know who the bankrupt person is? And the people replied, he is the person who has no wealth. He said, no, the bankrupt person is the one who comes on the day of judgment. And he or she has done so many good deeds. They've given charity, they've prayed, they've fasted, they've tahajjud, everything. They've done so many good deeds. Now, how do you know that you've done good deeds unless you've seen them? So you've seen them and your weight is there. You've seen them, they are heavy. You know their value. You don't want to lose them. You've done all these good deeds and you think you're going to enter paradise. وَقَدْ شَتَمَ هَذَا But he or she has abused this person or stolen from this person, or harmed this person, or backbit this person. What happens on that day? Allah says, وَلَيْسَ رَبُّكَ بِظَلَّامٍ لِلْعَبِيدِ Allah does not oppress His servants. In the Hadith Al-Qudsi, Allah SWT says, يَا عِبَادِي, my servants, لَقَدْ حَرَّمْتُ الظُّلْمَ عَلَى نَفْسِي إِنِّي حَرَّمْتُ الظُّلْمَ عَلَى نَفْسِي I've made oppression forbidden upon myself. وَجَعَلْتُهُ بَيْنَكُمْ حَرَامٍ And made it between you forbidden. فَلَا تَظَالَمُوا So never oppress one another. Rasul continues, he has harmed this person or that person. On that day, when that person comes to call for their right, Allah orders the angels to take from the deeds of that person. So he comes and takes them from the scale and gives them to the scale of the person of the victim. That victim's scale begins to become heavier. Depending on how much zulm, how much oppression, that person has done to the victim or victims, Allahu A'lam, more and more of their good deeds are taken off the scale. So now look at the comparison. The oppressors, even it could, it could be, a, this is a believer. The oppressor's scales is now twisting the other way. And the victim's scale is now getting heavier on the good side. You look, imagine that. You think to yourself, I hope this is all that I have victimized. Oh God, who else is there? This is what we're going to be thinking. Suddenly someone comes up. You think, oh no, I forgot all about this person. I backbit him or her on the evening on so-and-so when we had a gathering in the back of our house or in the living room or at, the, uh, or at the, the, the gym or at school or at work or with our relatives or at the barbecue. Or when we were going to the beach, swimming or fishing, having a good time. Oh no. I was celebrating too much that I forgot. I forgot that the day of judgment is coming. So we backbit this person, harmed that person, stole from that person, so on and so forth. And these people still come, they keep coming up. And on that day you remember them. We remember who we had victimized. And the more they come, the more we... We are afraid, we're terrified. 
Where did this person come from? Where did that person come from? Oh, you are reminded. You are reminded. And so the deeds are taken away. Rasul Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam says, this person becomes bankrupt of all the good deeds. Now, if there are more victims that come along, what happens? They complain, Ya Rabbi, Ya Rabbi. And the, man say, and the angels say, we have this person, the oppressor has no more good deeds to give. They're all run out. Allahu Akbar. So then Allah says, very well, we have forbidden oppression today. Take from the victims bad deeds and add them on top of, on top of the oppressor's bad deeds. And so, ya ikhwan, brothers and sisters, the person, Rasul Sallallahu says, he, is, he or she is dragged away and placed into hellfire upon their faces. This is a believer or a disbeliever. Yes, the believers who never associate partners with Allah one day, they'll be saved from hellfire due to the intercession, the intercession, the, the, the help, the plea of the Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu for his ummah and the believers and the other prophets for their ummah. But mostly Ar Rasul Sallallahu Muhammad Sallallahu will be placed as the best intercessor on that day for his ummah and so will the believers and the angels as well. But Allahu A'lam, after how long? Ar Rasul Sallallahu Alaihi tells us a person who on the day of judgment is brought who had lived the most comfortable and luxurious and happy life ever from the beginning of creation to the end of time and he will be dipped once into hellfire because of bad deeds once and taken out and the angels will ask him what do you remember he will say I do not remember a single happy moment ever truly and literally the man forgets every single happy moment he has ever had We're talking about a fire in which a thousand years distance journey, its heat reaches the disbelievers' eyes on that day and they explode from its heat. Its heat reaches very far. You want to be dipped for a day? A day in Jahannam could be a thousand years in accordance with some ayat in the Quran. The days are not like here. My brothers and sisters in Islam, compare that to a person who has not victimized anyone and their scales are full and there are more records being brought more rewards like that man who has the card in which la ilaha illallah is written the angels are about to take him to hellfire and Allah says hold on we have with us something that we have kept for him on top of that there is also the fasting as siyam did you not, did you not hear the hadith of Prophet where Allah SWT says in the hadith al-Qudsi everything that my servant does is for him or her Except for fasting, it is mine. Metaphor. Allah is saying, the fasting is mine. And I will reward especially with it. On that day, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will keep those deeds hidden. Even the angels don't know the value of those deeds for that fasting person. Person who fasts truly and properly. Voluntarily and compulsory. Allah will bring the special rewards and so their scales will even increase. Oh, what great light and what great happiness. That servant of Allah will be on that day. Allah tells us in the Quran about the difference between these two. And as, we, and as we move on from stage to stage in the hereafter, you see faces getting brighter or faces getting more misery. Faces that were once bright become a little bit miserable. Faces that are a little bit miserable, they become a little bit brighter. Until finally the criterion, the absolute distinction is made. We read in one hadith, that the Prophet ﷺ tells us about some believers that will be gathered on the Day of Judgment. Allah says in the Quran, first of all, يَوْمَ نَحْشُرُ الْمُتَّقِينَ إِلَى الرَّحْمَانِ وَفْدًا The day we shall gather those with taqwa, those who, who protected themselves from the things which Allah dis, is, is displeased with, unto the most gracious like a delegation. The mu'mineen, the believers will be gathered on that day like a delegation. What does that mean? It means, as Ibn Abbas anhu, narrates, it means they will be riding. Riding on a beautiful creature. In another hadith it says that the people will be gathered. When the believer comes forth from his grave, 
and goes on through the day of judgment. He will meet the most handsome form he has ever seen and it will have the nicest fragrance. He will say, who are you? The being will reply, you do not know me? The believer will say, no, but Allah has made you sweet smelling with a handsome face. The being will say, I am your righteous deeds. This is how you use to beautify and apply fragrance to your deeds in the worldly life. I was riding upon you in the entire length of your worldly life. So will you not ride upon me now? Come and ride on top of me, this beautiful creature. So the believer will therefore mount the creature. This is the meaning of Allah's statement. The day we shall gather those with taqwa onto the most gracious like a delegation. Now, this is the, the, belie the believer state. However, do you think that maybe the believer will lose that position as they progress through the hereafter? Allahu A'lam, in accordance with the ahadith that we have read, there is a possibility that they, will, that they will lose that honor on that day. Allah knows best. How? We read from the statements where Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tells us in the Quran. وَقَدِمْنَا إِلَى مَا عَمِلُوا مِنْ عَمَلٍ فَجَعَلْنَاهُ هَبَاءً مَنْثُورًا And so we approached all the good deeds they did. And we brought them on that day. But then we made them like scattered dust in the wind. This is in relation to disbelievers. Disbelievers and idolaters. However, this is, if this is their state, why does Allah make their deeds scattered? Because the good things that dis the disbelievers did in this life, if they were not sincerely for the sake of Allah, and they were not in accordance with the laws of Allah, they are not accepted. Similarly with the believers, Allah says in the Quran, يَا أَيُّهَا الَّذِينَ آمَنُوا لَا تُبْطِلُوا صَدَقَاتِكُمْ بِالْمَنِّ وَالْأَذَىٰ O you who believe, now he's addressing the believers, do not cancel out your charity in other words your good deeds but here the example used is the charity do not cancel out your charity bil manni wal other by mere of by, by means of insincerity or harming others you want to boast about what you do hypocrisy insincerity or you do good deeds in order to look better than someone else so that you can take their position, for example, to harm others. There are many ways. Allah tells us the believers themselves can lose their honor on that day. So all the deeds are brought. You see them. They are weighed. They are heavy. Suddenly they lose their weight. Suddenly they lose their weight. فَلَا نُقِيمُ لَهُمْ يَوْمَ الْقِيَامَةِ وَزْنَ We recited a verse last week about some people whom Allah will bring their deeds and all those good deeds that would have been heavy, they would have been heavy. Allah says, on that day we will give them no weight. They'll have no value. They will have no value. Here is another example. Our Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa tells us in Sahih Hadith, which is in Muslim. He said, إِيَّاكُمْ hasad, Beware of jealousy. Jealousy is when you are envious towards your brothers and sisters and you wish that they didn't have the blessing that they had. And so you are jealous of them and you hate it. And you begin to possibly backbite them or try to want to do things to make them lose it. So beware of jealousy. For verily jealousy. Naam? What did I say? Afwan. Uh, For verily jealousy. Jazakallah khair. Where you see jealousy eats away your good deeds just as fire eats away wood. You see those good deeds they're shown to you. Suddenly they have no weight. Why? Because the warnings Allah gave us, we did not heed them. And one of the ways is harming the rights of others. They will take your deeds. They will take your deeds. How will they know that you had deeds if, you, if they weren't shown and valued? Huh? Give you an example. What's gold to us? Why is it so... I mean, if you show a child, you show a child gold. A child doesn't care about gold or money. About that paper, $20 paper, or the $50 paper, the $100 paper. Who cares about it? But as that child grows old and begins to learn that, that paper money has value, gold has value, what people think of it, what it could do for you, then they want it. 
greed begins to develop. On the day of judgment, same thing happened. But it's not gold, and it's not pearls, and it's not wealth. Rather, it's the deeds that people will be greedy for. Now, Wallahi, they will be greedy for them to take them even. And you know what? No one can trust anyone. Wallahi, the child, the son or the daughter, will try and take good deeds of their father and mother. And the father and mother will try to take good deeds of their son and daughter, of the brother, of the sister, of the wife, of the husband. Anyone, take even one good deed. We want them. We want to make our scales heavier on that day. So the children will blame the father and the mother if they can. And the father and mother will blame the children if they can. Just to get that extra deed and those rewards. Compare that, however, to pious believers who used to be companions in this life. On the day of judgment, they will congratulate one another. They will say congratulations. And the other one will say congratulations. One of them will say, look what I got. The other one will say, look what I got. Alhamdulillah, we were believers and we led each other to the right path. They grab each other's hands and they cross over. And they go to Jannah awaiting at the door before Muhammad sallallahu arrives for the door to be opened. What a beautiful ending. Compare this to that. Allah says in the Quran which we recited last week وَالسَّمَاءِ ذَاتِ الرَّجْعِ وَالْأَرْضِ ذَاتِ الصَّدَعِ إِنَّهُ لَقَوْلُ الْفَصْلِ Allah swears an oath, He says this this uh, message of Islam will reveal or is a word of separation of the two criterion, separation of right and wrong, the good from the evil. And on the day of judgment, this fossil will happen. The separation of between who was righteous and who was not. The truth will be revealed in all of its, in all of its value. So now the scales have been resolved. What is next? Now the sentencing. Now the sentencing. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is the one who sentences. The angels have been given orders. You know when you enter a courtroom and the judge finds the person guilty or not guilty, if he sentences them, he doesn't need to tell the police or she tell the police officers what to do. They already have the orders. They already know. They have studied. They've gotten a course. They know that they now have to shackle the person and take him in a certain procedure. If they are great criminals, the law specifies how they'll be shackled. Some of them in some laws will be shackled with their feet and their hands. Some of them are placed distant from everybody. They are placed in a, in, in a glass room so thick. Some of them are in different ways. Some of them stand with you and then the police come and take them from their families. Some of them get to say goodbye. Some of them cannot depending on the level of the crime and the threat of the criminal, the danger. On the Day of Judgment, same thing will happen. And also for the believers who have passed, the sentencing will happen of good. What will they receive? And so there are angels of blessings and there are angels of torture. And there are different various angels, angels for various jobs to do. And so the person's deeds which failed him or her, the sentencing will be in accordance with that. They'll be driven to the fire. Those whose deeds failed them. They'll be driven to the fire. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala describes how he will drive the believers and the disbelievers. We recited before the verses. On that day, يَوْمَ نَحْشُرُ الْمُتَّقِينَ إِلَى الرَّحْمَانِ wafda. The day we shall gather those with taqwa onto the most gracious, like a delegation, Ibn Abbas says, they will be riding on beautiful creatures. So imagine that, Allahu Akbar, those who pass. You're riding on this beautiful creature full of light. Allahu Alam what it looks like, but it's beautiful and smells beautiful. Imagine in your head, although this is not it, but I want you to imagine yourself coming before the king. The king has summoned you, a great king, and he wants to reward you with something. You've done something he wants to reward you. On the way to his palace, he sends people with beautiful, well-groomed horses, the best and fine horses, and you are to mount those horses. And you have to come riding in the, with these horses to face the king, this beautiful king who will reward you. On that day, 
you will reach Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala finally or you'll be driven to heaven into the doors of heaven where you will meet Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala on beautiful creatures that you will ride on some of them with nur light as light as, as much as mountains some of them as much as men some the nur it is the light it is the light on that day which drives you ahead it is the light which you have earned from your deeds in this it's actually it's actual light because everything else will be dark if you have no light you will not know your way and the angels will drive you the other way the light will guide you on that day real light nur rasul sallam tells that on that day he will notice his his rasul sallam will notice his ummah those who followed him on that day through their light the light which emanates from their faces their arms and their legs muhajjalin they are like the striped horses among dark black horses they will have whiteness coming out from their faces their arms and their legs regardless of your color in this world you will have that nur and Rasul Sallallahu will recognize you with that. And you will be able to guide yourself with that nur. As for the disbelievers or those who their deeds failed, even from among the believers, if they have no light, they will fail along the way. What will happen to them? When their sentences are revealed, some of the criminals, the angels will grab them with brass, brass claws. They'll rush to them and brass claws. Some of them, their brass claws will immerse into their forehead here and into their legs. And they will be shackled. So they're driven along in shackles. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in the Quran, وَنَسُوقُ الْمُجْرِمِينَ إِلَىٰ جَهَنَّمَ وِرْدًا Which means, and we shall drive the criminals to hellfire in a thirsty state. A thirsty state. They have no water to drink. In another verse, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, they are shackled. They are feebled. None shall have the power of intercession for these people. There will be no one who can intercede for them like the believers who intercede for each other. These disbelievers will have no one. And they will call out as they are driven. They will call out like this. Now we have no intercessors, nor a close friend to help us. That's when they will begin to scream and cry. Where are they driven? They know where they are being driven to. Screaming and crying. They will cry so much, pleading out to the angels. And as they are crying, the angels have no mercy, those ones. They go and grab each person in accordance with their, the, the, what they have been sentenced. Some of them will be wrapped around with pythons coming out from hellfire, like, like tongues coming out from hellfire. These are the people who had wealth and never gave the zakat, the, 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 the duty owed to the poor and those others who have the right to it in accordance with Allah's laws. Some of them, they'll see their abode inside of hellfire and they'll see what is awaiting them according to what they did in life. Some of them, for example, will see that their wealth will be transformed into iron. And this iron, it will come to them waiting for them and they'll see others being ironed, burnt on their sides and on their front and on their backs and on their everywhere. And they'll say, oh my God, this is what is awaiting us. And some of them will scream and say, oh, our Lord, just give us another chance. Give us another chance. Huh? Give me another chance. We admit, we admit. But there is no response from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. The angels will say, you have been given the chances. You have been given the chances and everything, every reason for you to know what's right and wrong. Some of them will be thrown with the brass claws into Jahannam. Some of them will be led into Jahannam. Some of them Jahannam will grab them. Some of them Jahannam cannot have any way to even reach them. And the angels will fly with them. Let's have a look now. What is, am I talking about? Just before they are taken to Jahannam, and Allah describes as well, وَسِيقَ الَّذِينَ كَفَرُوا إِلَىٰ جَهَنَّمَ زُمَرًا Those who disbelieve, they will be driven to hellfire in rows. The worst of them in the front. The worst of them in the front. And as you go back, the, the less worse. But they're all bad. So the worst of them in the front will receive the first punishments and the worst of the punishments among the disbelievers. 
There will be believers. However, they showed off their deeds. The scholar who showed off his knowledge for the sake of being called a scholar. The reciter who showed off his or her recitation so that people can praise them. The charity giver who gave charity so that people will say what a generous person. The person who died a martyr, well, died in saying in the cause of Allah, saying that I died for the cause of Allah, but only so that people can build monuments out of him or her or to be called a hero. Their intentions were not for Allah. Their intentions were for people. They were insincere. These among the believers will be the first who will, who the, with whom hellfire will be ignited. Will they be saved later on? Maybe with the intercession of the Prophet Sallallahu But the, the disbelievers will be in there forever. Those who chose to disbelieve in Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala. They will all reach the third and last station. We said the hisab, accountability has been done, receival of, of the books. Secondly, the weighing, now the crossing. What is this crossing? Allah says in the Quran, <laughs> Then we shall bring them around hellfire. Jithiya. Jithiya, there is a difference of opinion in what it means. Some of the Sahabas said it means sitting, sitting like that with shackles, waiting to cross. Others, they said standing, but with shackles. Then Allah says, then indeed we shall drag out from every sect all those who are worst rebellious against the most gracious Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So they're the first who Allah will order the angels to take out, receive the worst of punishment before everyone's eyes. When these people reach and they see this and they start to be placed in hellfire, what happens? A conversation begins to happen between them. What do they say, the people of hellfire? Allah says in the Quran, until they will be gathered all together in the fire or around the fire the last of them will say to the first of them our Lord these misled us so give them a double torment of the fire so now the disbelievers themselves begin to blame each other and when they see the worst of them being thrown they will say they're the ones our Lord look look Please give them at least double the torment. They know they can't get out of it. So what do they say? Give they, they are the ones who led us astray. So at least give them double our punishment. May they burn double ours. So what happens then? Those who will be taken, they will say, back to the people who blame them, they will say, why are you blaming us? You are equal in the sin as we were. Because you responded and you helped. And usually they are the leaders and the people who led the people astray. They are the same. What does Allah reply to them? When they start saying, oh, Our Lord, give them double and give them this and give them triple, Allah says, Then verily we know best those who are most worthy of being burnt therein and their level. And Allah says, He will say, For each one there is a double torment, but you know not. Meaning, for those who we know reserve the double torment, we'll give them. For those of them who deserve only a lesser torment, we will give them. We know this is none of your business. Everybody, you are responsible for your own deeds. As for the believers, what will happen to them? they will be looking at other believers who are not able to pass and they feel sorry for them and so they begin to ask God and supplicate to him for them but before that happens something occurs to both sides Allah says in the Quran now after this he says 
لكم إلا واردها كان على ربك حتما مقضيا ثم ننجي الذين اتقوا ونذروا الظالمين فيها جثيا which means there is not one of you but will pass over hellfire there is not one of you but will pass over it hellfire this is with your lord a decree which must be accomplished then we shall save those who had taqwa and who shall leave the and we shall leave the wrongdoers in hellfire jithiya in misery down on their knees feebled wa in minkum illa wariduha there is not one of you but will pass over it in accordance with the hadith of the prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam reported by ibn jarir from abdullah that he said concerning allah's statement every one of you will pass it he said the bridge over hell is like the sharp edge of a sword the first group to cross it will pass like a flash of lightning the second group will pass like the wind the third group will pass like the fastest horse the fourth group will pass like the fastest cow the then why are they using horse and cow because this was the vehicle used in those days for transportation so in other words if we were talking in today's terms you talk about the vehicles we ride in today cars and motorbikes and so on then the rest will pass while the angels will be saying oh allah save them save them It's about the believers this narration is supporting narrations my brothers and sisters similar to it from the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam in the two sahihs and other collections as well these narrations have been recorded and and reported by many sahabas of the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam including abu huraira including anas abu sa'id jabir and other jabir and other companions the messenger of allah sallallahu alaihi wasallam was once in the house of hafsa his wife radiyallahu anha when he said la yadkhulu an-nar ahad shahid badran wal hudaybiyah aw al hudaybiyah no one who was present at the battle of badr and hudaybiyah of the muslims will enter into the hellfire then hafsa radiyallahu anha said doesn't allah say in the quran wa in minkum illa wariduha there is not one of you but will pass over it the messenger of allah replied by reciting thumma nunajji alladhina taqaw then we shall save those who had taqwa the remainder of the verse in the two sahihs there is a hadith reported from az zuhri from sa'id from abu huraira the messenger of allah sallallahu alaihi wasallam said no one of the muslims who has had three children who will who all died will be touched by the hellfire except from an oath that must be fulfilled what is that oath that must be fulfilled it is the oath of allah subhanahu wa ta'ala where he says every single person will pass by it this is a decree that we have promised and it will be accomplished this is the oath meaning some people will cross and will not be into hellfire if they were believers in allah subhanahu wa ta'ala of course and fulfilled its conditions and they've had three of their children who had died yeah children before the age of puberty who died this is a mercy from allah one of the blessings which allah gives on that day that he will save you from the fire because of the sadness and the sorrow that he made you go through in this life because of your children but you were patient allah rewards you for your patience so the fire will not touch you yet even those people whose allah's mercy reaches they will pass it even the prophet muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam will pass it every person will pass the sirat this bridge which is bestowed over hellfire we ask allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to save us from falling into, into hellfire with it the people with great light will pass very quick the people with a little bit of light they will have it on the edge of their thumb and in accordance with the sahih hadith and it will sometimes light up and at times it will go dark and ar rasul sallallahu alaihi wasallam describes this bridge over hellfire as well saying hellfire will be burning underneath somehow and it has claws that reach it they try to grab people from there it's hungry it has a tongue which comes out as well and it will scrape people some people will cross it and they have been scraped by the claws of hellfire and burnt some of them will fall and they will be saved later on and some of them will fall and they will never be saved
Now here, the disbelievers, when they come to pass it, it means that they will go onto the bridge and then they will fall. They will not be saved. There will be people who are hypocrites. They used to say we're Muslim, but they weren't. And when they see the light on people among the Muslims who they used to know in this life and find and discover how fast they're, 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 they're crossing, they plead to them. They will say to them, Unzuruna, this is in the Quran, in Surah Al Hadid, Unzuruna, please wait for us, wait. We used to know you in the former life. In other verses, it says, We used to know you. Unzuruna, naqta bismin nurikum. Let us take a little bit of your light, just a little bit. Angels will scream at them. Go back. You have no room. Go. Go back and you try and find light behind you. Meaning, what did you leave behind of good deeds for you to find any light? The only light on that day is the light which you put forth and left out and left behind. Meaning, you will find on that day. فَضُرِبَ بَيْنَهُمْ بِسُورِ a wall is separated between them and the believers. One side, it has mercy. And the other side, it has torture and torment. So these hypocrites will fall and they will be in the lowest of the lowest pits of hellfire, even lower than Iblis himself. The crossing of this bridge, my dear brothers and sisters, is a very dark one. It's very, very dark. And only your light will make you cross, as we said. Allah says, then we will save those who had taqwa. What is taqwa? Taqwa is a term used by Allah in the Quran for those people who, when they are about to do something wrong, they remember Allah. They remember His punishment. They love Allah so much that they do not want to lose that love. So what do they do? They physically avoid the forbidden thing. And they don't question, why is it haram? I'm going to keep doing it until I'm convinced. Why? Allah told you it's not good, don't. And it also means those who did the wrong, but then later on remembered Allah and repented. Made tawbah. These are the people of taqwa. These are the people who will be saved when they cross. And some of them who fell into hellfire, they'll also be saved later on. Through the intercession, as we said, of the angels, the believers, and the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Now there is a group of people who will reach, in accordance to some narrations, some sahabas interpreted this verse, saying that they will reach a high cliff on the bridge, somewhere, very high on the cliff. But they have not passed yet. And they will be stationed there. They can't go forward, and they are also not falling into hellfire. So they're saved from the fire, but they can't also go forward. They're right in the middle. Why are they on high cliffs? They said because they are called the A'raf. That's their name. They are called the A'raf. And in Arabic, Al-A'raf, when you refer to Urf, it generally means a peak, somewhere high. That's why they said they'll be somewhere high. And Allah knows best. Also, Al-A'raf means those who you know. Al-Urf, Ma'ruf, or not, not Al-Urf is customs. But someone who is known. So these people will be known. By who? They'll be known by the believers and they'll be known by disbelievers. Who are they? They are the people whose good deeds were exactly equal to the amount of their bad deeds. What does that mean? It doesn't mean that you did exactly the same amount of good deeds as the amount of bad deeds. No. It means that the value on that day, you might have lesser good deeds, but their value is heavy, or you might have more bad deeds, but their value is less. And so it's equilibriumed until they equal on the same on the scale, the same worth. Same, this is worth this much, is worth this much. Oh, they're equal. So what happens to them? Their good deeds pre pre protect them from the fire. 
but their bad deeds prevent them from going forward. What happens to these people? Allah is not oppressive. Allah talks about them in the Quran, Surah Al-A'raf. The disbelievers in the hellfire will see them and they begin to give them bad hope. They will say, you're going to fall. And the believers on the other side will say, oh, our Lord, save them. What is the point of these who are stationed there? It is one of the hopes which Allah gives in order to show the disbelievers in hellfire more misery. But at the same time, they can't pass because it's unfair. Other people have to beat them. They are left towards the end. Then a voice calls out to the people of hellfire and it will say, as in the Quran, see these people that you knew in the former life? They did some wrong things with you? You thought that we are going to place them with you in here. But today we will give them our mercy and before your eyes, watch how we will save them. And so Allah will save the people of the Araf and take them over the bridge and they will await at the door of Jannah. Or they will enter Jannah after the believers. So Allah says to the disbelievers in hellfire, this is one of the torments for them. These people you thought will also put them with you, we've saved them. But you, you don't deserve it. That's how bad your deeds were. That's how bad your belief was. Your Lord is not an oppressor to any of his servants. No one. Muslim or non-Muslim. Now we reach heaven and hell and the entrance of it. So I want to stop here, inshallah. Heaven and hellfire, inshallah ta'ala. But I leave you with this story about the good deeds. There was a man by the name of Malik ibn Dinar, a great scholar of the past. This man was a thief before he became a scholar. And he used to drink alcohol. One day, Allah wanted to guide him, and one day he saw a tyrant man who had an employee, and this employee was poor. And the man would not give him his, his wage for the day. So he said to him, give him his wage, Malik ibn Dinar. He had some mercy. And the tyrant would not give him. So Malik ibn Dinar took out some wealth and gave it to the poor man and said to him, tell your daughters tonight to make dua for Malik ibn Dinar. They made dua for him. And one day he wanted to get married. No one would give him their daughter because he was a thief and an alcoholic. So he bought a slave. There were slaves in those days. He bought a slave, freed her and married her. And then Allah gave him a daughter named Fatima. At the age of five, his daughter died. He loved her so much and he was saddened for her loss. Time passed. And one day he saw a dream as if the world had ended. And he saw in front of him the fire. And behind him there was a, a dragon chasing him. He said, I ran away from the dragon and I reached a cliff. And in that cliff I was about to jump, but there was hellfire. So I turned away and the dragon's behind me. He said, I ran and reached the ocean, the sand and the ocean. And there I saw a very old man. He couldn't even speak to me. So he pointed this way and said, go that way. I went and I found a cliff. And in that cliff there were children. And the children called out, Ya Fatima, Uncle the Abaki. Fatima, save your dad. And then I saw my daughter Fatima. She came up to me and she did this with her hand and the dragon faded away. And she said to me, Dad, look, your bad deeds are the dragon. They weren't big enough to save you. And your good deeds are the old man. They're not even enough to save you. The bad deeds are so bad that they're so big. And your good deeds are so bad that they couldn't save you. And then she recited, Alam ya'ni lilladhina amanu an takhsha'a qulubuhum li dhikrillah wa ma nazala min al-haqq wa la yakunu kalladhina utu al-kitab min qabl min qabl fatala alayhim al-amad fatala alayhim al-amad faqasat qulubuhum wa kathirun minhum fasiqun Which means, is it not time for those who believe to turn to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala before their hearts harden? We end our lesson. Jazakumullahu khair. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala accept your deeds and ours. Walhamdulillahi rabbil alameen. Sallallahu alayhi wa sallam.